Greetings in the name of Christ and welcome to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church on this festive Palm Sunday morning. I hope everyone has picked up a palm because they don't only go for children in this congregation. Everybody gets to wave one. Just don't whack your neighbor in the head, okay? <laughs> yeah. um, next week we're going to enjoy Easter breakfast before we enjoy our worship service. Jesus enjoyed breakfast with his disciples in one of the post-resurrection stories you may remember on the lake shore, something we're very familiar with around here. So come and enjoy some breakfast at 9 next Sunday morning. There's a sign-up sheet in the gathering space if you would like to bring something. Uh, one great hour of sharing envelopes are in our bulletins today, as is the pamphlet. Uh, this this uh, offering, special offering, is one of five, I believe, we take each year in our denomination. It goes to PDA, the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance Program, which is the initial responder in places of disaster. Some of us have worked in some of those disasters. I remember going to Mississippi after Katrina to help, and um, they, I'm sure, have been first responders right now to the to uh, northern Texas where the camp the fires were. Presbyterian hunger program, which helps to provide food and self development of people, where people learn not only uh, to feed their family for a day, but fish and feed their family for a life um, a lifetime. So, among other things they learned, but what's that old saying? Eat a fish for one meal, but fish for life, and you have meals for life. So, I hope you will give generously. Our Maundy Thursday and Good Friday services are at noon this week. We have been snowed out of these services often enough that we now make them both at noon. So, we hope you can join us. They're powerful services. We'll have communion on Thursday and be in the round at the center of this sanctuary for Good Friday. Uh, let's see, on April 11th, the fellowship ministry team is inviting us to a movie night at the Garden Theater. Uh, the movie starts at 7.30, admission is free, and it's the great movie, A League of Our Own. Remember that about the women's baseball team? And uh, so you can sign up in the gathering space if you would like to do that. Uh, also, the month of May will bring us Visio Divina, uh, which is a forum of seeing art or hearing art uh, with God in mind. And uh, we're going to have a couple of weeks where the artists in this congregation are lifted up. I'm working frantically on a counted cross stitch to get it in, so we'll see if I make it. Uh, Canicum Novum from... Uh, Arts on the Hill, Canicum Novum is the wonderful choir from NMC. We'll be singing a concert during that time. And also a Getting Back to Summer concert, which will be for Stamp, will be May 18th. So watch for these events as they come. They're a couple months away, but we want to make sure they're on your calendar. Uh, let's see, is there anything else today? All right, let's stand up, look at the camera, directly in front of me and wish our friends online the peace of Christ. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you.
please join me in the call to worship by reading responsively. Give thanks to the Lord who is good. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. Let us pray. Merciful God, as we enter Holy Week, turn our hearts again to Jerusalem, for the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that united with Christ and all the faithful, we may one day enter in triumph the city not made by human hands, the new Jerusalem, eternal in the heavens, where with you and the Holy Spirit, Christ lives in glory forever. Amen. Faith enables us to go and live out of control. When we learn to depend on God, we learn how to let go of control. Palm Sunday and the events of Holy Work Week were not what the people hoped for or imagined when they dreamed of a Messiah. Christ is doing a new thing among us. So lay down your cloaks, shout Hosanna, and risk following Christ all the way to the cross. As we extinguish this light, we let go of control. We let go of our assumptions, our own plans, our hopes, so that we can see Christ in our midst, transforming the world. Everyone, as we enter the coming days of darkness, remind us that you are the one who calls new life out of death, light out of darkness, Give us the strength to follow you to the cross. Amen. Today's first hymn is number 196, All Glory, Laud, and Honor.
the face of this day of palms and Jesus journey to the cross as we face this day with honesty. Let us confess our sin before God. Let us pray. Hold us close, patient God, for we know how hard this week can be. We see our own failures mirrored in the passion story. We know we betray the trust given to us. We let our children down. We avoid the eyes of the homeless. We treat your creation with indifference and abuse. We deny your love by covering up our talents, hiding behind low self-esteem, and looking to others to lead the way. We are frightened by the costliness of following you and fear that we will be found fleeing the scene or joining in with the accusing crowd. Loving God, hold us close and forgive us so we may move through the shadows, confront the darkness, and rejoice in the surprising triumph of your stronger-than-death love. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Tell the daughters of despair, proclaim it to the sons of sadness. Christ has come to save and forgive us. Hosanna! We will give our thanks to God, who comes to bring us grace, hope, and new life. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Well, tell you what we'll do. I'll take it out to you. How about that? So this is Palm Sunday, which what happened on Palm Sunday? Do you remember? Do you remember about Jesus coming into Jerusalem in a parade? And they were waving their palms like we did this morning. So we have joined Christians from centuries who've been waving their palms on this Palm Sunday in remembrance of what happened with Jesus. And in a gospel, they laid their palms down. In another one, they also laid their cloaks down. So some of them were so excited that they took their coats off and laid it down on the ground for him. Why would they do that? Do you have any idea? Have you ever seen in a castle with a king or a queen when they roll out a red carpet all the way down the aisle? Do you know why they did that? So that they wouldn't have to get their clothes messed up on a dirty floor or dirt underneath it if it was outside? It was a sign that somebody very special was coming. So the way the regular people showed their love to Jesus and their excitement about this being the guy who's going to come and save them from the terrible Romans who were killing them and hurting them. And so they laid their palms down and their cloaks and they welcomed him like a king. How many kings do you know who go to the cross? There aren't many. Now, the cross was used as a form of crucifixion, I mean, a form of torture in Jesus' time. Um, but most kings didn't end up on it. Most kings got, either died in office or maybe got killed on the battlefield defending their country. But they didn't go to the cross. But that's where this king went. So people were 
mega excited about him coming because he was going to save them. And then he ends up getting killed by the end of the week. That sort of takes the air out of your lungs, doesn't it? Like, what kind of king is this? Yeah. So, but for today, we're still celebrating. Because as this week moves along, we will follow Jesus to each of the things that he did this last week. And today we're going to remember that as we enter into this week, but we're going to celebrate still. Okay. And I am celebrating that you all are here today. It's really exciting. And you made it on time, which is awesome because sometimes I don't even make it on time. I have said that I'm going to be late to my own funeral. Can you imagine that? <laughs> you know what we do in this congregation? We hold hands, and if you all are comfortable doing that, you can do that with your partner or your neighbor. And we say the Lord's Prayer. So let's say it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You can go to Sunday school. God, we cannot contain our hosannas. We must cry out, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Equip us now in the reading and preaching of your word to remain steadfast in our praise of you, steadfast God, and in our acts of faith. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Our first reading today is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, the second chapter, uh, reading verses 5 through 11. Listen to hear God's word. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of God for the people of God.
gospel lesson today is from the 11th chapter of Mark. I'll be reading verses 1 through 11. I invite you to listen for the word of God. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing, untying the colt? Then they told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. When is the last time you saw Tim Rice and Andrew Lloyd Webber's wonderful musical, Jesus Christ Superstar? Do you remember it? I think the first one came out in 1973, and I was in junior high or high school. I think I was at the latter end of junior high school. And um, I am quite sure our Presbyterian Church youth group went to see it. There have been several others over the years that have been made. And one is um, a, a millennial version, which I'll talk about here shortly. But in this musical, the passion of Jesus is captured. And one of the more controversial things about it is that there is no resurrection scene. And it is thought that Tim Rice and Andrew Lloyd Webber wanted to, to focus more on the divine Jesus, I mean on the human Jesus, than the divine Jesus. So it's thought that maybe the resurrection fell more in the divine piece. I'm sure biblical theologians would argue about that, but they didn't write the musical, right? Anyway, one of my favorite scenes of the whole show was the one uh, of the Palm Sunday sequence. There have been several versions, as I said, but the Millennium version, uh, in that version, the scene could practically be a praise and worship service. As the crowd sing, Christ, you know I love you, did you see I waved? I believe in you and God. Tell me that I'm saved. In the 1973 version, there are people appearing in thin air doing backflips and lots of very energetic hand-waving and dancing. During the millennium version in this number, Simon the Zealot pulls Jesus' ear, telling him that these screaming fans, in fact, number 50,000 people. And you know how it is at a professional sports game. There is a lot of human power in 50,000 people. 
As a matter of fact, Simon says, they would do whatever you ask them. And together we could be powerful enough to rid our country of the Romans who have occupied and oppressed our people for far too long. In the end, Simon sings, you'd get the power, you'd get the glory. He sings it as automatic rifles are passed through the crowd. Simon finishes out saying power and glory forever and ever and ever, amen, with an ammo belt draped across his body and the crowds happily waving their rifles around. They try to pass one off to Jesus, who looks very disturbed refuses the gun, and with anguish in his voice, sings these words, Neither you, Simon, nor the 50,000, nor the Romans, nor the Jews, nor Judas, nor the Twelve, nor the priests, nor the scribes, nor doomed Jerusalem itself, understand what power is. Understand what glory is. Understand at all understand at all. As you can imagine, this took the wind out of the sails of that crowd. They lower their weapons and return home dejected and disappointed. This five-minute scene of Jesus Christ Superstar captures so well the desires of the crowds that were caught up in the hosannas that we sang earlier. Jesus was hailed into Jerusalem because they imagined he would enter as a victorious king. He would overthrow Rome with violent force and return them to freedom. This was the crowd's idea of power and glory, their idea of the kingdom Jesus proclaimed. Instead, Jesus refuses to take up the sword, or in modern terms, maybe the gun. He is paraded into Jerusalem not to become the next Napoleon or army rebel or commander-in-chief, but to die. This act, in, of, in and of itself, is a parody on the people's understanding of power and glory. The king of glory comes not through guns and displays of strength, but sitting humbly on a borrowed donkey, preparing to tell the truth, even if it means he must die. The heralded Messiah has a different plan that will not lead to an earthly throne, but to a cross. If Jesus is not this kind of exalted king, who is he then? This is the question we explore in the next days. From this Sunday of the Palms, to Maundy Thursday, to Good Friday, to Easter. I love that we take up palm branches today, just as the crowds did over 2,000 years ago. This is a real, living invitation to embody the story ourselves, not just to hear it, but to become part of the great drama. Over the next week, you are invited to the rest of the story. On Maundy Thursday, we partake of the holy meal that Jesus partook with his disciples in the Last Supper. We are invited to this meal, whether we imagine like Peter, we will never deny Jesus. We are also invited, even if we are arguing amongst ourselves, who is the greatest and best and most successful. We are invited, too, if we feel the pain of Judas, some deep grief that we have already betrayed our Lord. God's love makes room at the table for all of us. We will hear again how Jesus bowed to wash his disciples' feet and be relieved that we aren't doing it ourselves. <laughs> but we remember what it would be like to be cleansed and made holy by giving and receiving in this humble way which Jesus initiates. In the service, we will be invited again 
to come to know Jesus' way of being King and Messiah. On Friday, you are invited to come to the cross to give full acknowledgement of its pain, to see innocence killed by the powerful who have only their own interests in mind. We will stand there as the Marys did, weeping, and we will lament too. We will hear readings of Jesus' last words, and from this quiet, holy, heavy place, we will leave in silence to come back next Sunday in disbelief that God could bring anything out of that death. And we will join together in surprise and wonder and awe at the Easter festival music and announcement of the resurrection. Yes, we will walk the road as those first disciples did this holy week. This Emmanuel, God with us, is a God of unstoppable faithfulness. From the moment of the conception of a baby who would be born to a poor couple, with questions swirling around them about his paternity, to the moment the baby emerged to be placed in a borrowed feed box for his crib, to the moment he presented himself to his cousin to be baptized in the Jordan, to the moment he first shared the good news of God's inbreaking reign and began the ministry of teaching, healing, and feeding. To the moment when the crowds waved their palms, as we did today, to the meal, to the cross where he breathed his last, Jesus Christ embodied for humanity the love of God inscribed on this one human life. In his faithfulness, Jesus accepted death rather than deny God's unstoppable love because God is with us. And the story is not over yet, which I would characterize as amazing grace. Jesus is not the kind of the Messiah the people were expecting, and frankly, we struggle to understand any better than Simon the 50,000, the Romans or the Jews, the priests or scribes, or doomed Jerusalem itself, what Jesus' power and glory look like in this world. But this week, you are invited to enter Jesus' vision, to walk into relationship with this Lord of love, who lays down his life for his friends, and invites us to follow him. May we come to know ourselves as actors in this great drama, as God in Christ continues to live and work, redeeming all things in love. To this God be all glory and power. Amen. Now we're going to sing hymn 199, Filled with Excitement.
let us affirm our faith from Romans 8. We believe there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose. We are convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now it is our great privilege to turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we love a parade. We love the floats and the bands. We love to wave at those passing by. We remember the joy of receiving candy thrown to the crowd, and what could be better than balloons or ticker tape to celebrate a victory? What joy! And yet we know too well that parades can become mobs, shouts of joy replaced by screams of terror, cries of Hosanna turned to crucify. O oh Lord, we need you. Hear our prayers for people who wait for the heroes and victors to arrive instead of joining the challenge themselves. Hear our prayers for people who cannot lift their voice because life or health has worn them down. Hear our prayers for people who spoil the joy with their own agenda. Hear our prayers for people who feel a burden of expectations they cannot meet. Hear our prayers for people who just need a little peace and quiet. Hear our prayers for people who wonder why everyone else has not yet joined the march. Hear our prayers for people who have heard not yet wait a little longer. And hear our prayers for people who won't wave palms today because they live in an area in war or in conflict. Hear our prayers for people who cannot face the cross. Hear our prayers for people who desperately need the empty tomb on Easter morning. Hear, O oh Lord, our prayers for all the things we carry. In this blessed silence, hear the prayers of our hearts.
give us strength and courage, faith and hope to follow Jesus this holy week. As we dine at tables, as we pray, as we walk, and even as we flee, remind us of your love that never fails. O oh Lord, we need you until that day when we might know your complete joy. As we wait, we ask you to be with us. And we pray in the confidence of being the children of God. Amen. Consider what you carry in your hands today. Do you carry the reins of a donkey, a cloak to share, a branch to wave? What do you bring to welcome the Lord today? Whether you share your gifts as an offering, as it is passed, or online through our portal there, or through the mail, trust that the Lord needs you. Let us receive the gifts of our life and labor to the Lord so that we may be part of God's kingdom of heaven realized on earth. God of all good gifts, we thank you for showing us how to care for each other. May these gifts lead to great feasting for those who have no banquet set before them. May these gifts build shelters and places of prayer for those who are homeless. May these gifts proclaim your desire that all your creation live in healing peace. 
Give us grateful hearts, O God, in the name of the one who came to draw all people to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Today's final hymn is number 223, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. <laughs> From Palm Sunday to Holy Saturday, may God's infinite mercy grant you a journey of renewal and hope in prayer and reflection. In joyful anticipation of our Lord's resurrection, we will live and serve this holy week in remembrance of Christ's love. Amen.